We now return to Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Opportunity Project, the radio show discussing honest truth about Illinois policy and politics. Here's AM 560's Dan Proft. Dan Proft back with Pat Hughes in this edition of Rising, and Pat kind of alluded to this in our conversation with State Representative Peter Breen, but uh, Atlas Van Lines came out with their annual migration survey again at the end of the year, and uh, drum roll, please. Worst in the nation for out migration, Illinois. Uh, that's uh, concurrent with the additional news that uh, we here in the land of Lincoln fallen behind the Keystone State, Pennsylvania. We're now the sixth most populous state, dropping from five. I think uh, we'll have Rhode Island pass us and by 2023 at this pace. And um, 62% of the state's moves being outbound, worst in the nation. And that's before anything's done on federal tax policy. That uh, has, as we've talked about in the show before, has little to do with uh, the weather as people are migrating away from Illinois to Wisconsin and Iowa and Minnesota and Indiana, uh, in addition to you know Florida and Arizona. So there's some of that out migration, but it doesn't explain why we're the worst of the nation. There's something else going on here. What's going on here is people can't make it make sense to be here financially. Yeah, and interesting, Dan. You know, we always want to talk about Illinois, of course, because this is our home state and the one we're trying to save. But Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Maryland, those are the other major out migration states. And, and, you know, what do they all have in common? Right. They have, you know, uh, poor, uh, oftentimes, I think exclusively in in this case, Democrat leadership. Um, well, Maryland, you got Hogan. The governor's a Republican, but yeah, your point. Well, well we have a Republican governor too, but it's still Democrat leadership in terms of the yeah. policies, right? In terms of the reform policies. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I mean. That sort of that sort of milieu. I forgot we had a Republican governor. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to. Well, he's not in charge. It's hard to remember. But the, the, the point is, you know, you can't look at Illinois. People look at Illinois on the opposite side and say, well, you know, it's cold here, or you know, our population's aging and they're moving south, or whatever excuse they want to make that isn't related to the economic conditions of the state. If you look at these other states, you realize that they share similar economic uh, union-type structures, taxing structures, high tax. Um, And and so this is, you know, a failure of policy and leadership. And if we had different policies, which would come from different leadership, we would be more like just even our own Midwestern neighbors that have recovered. Like, look how Michigan has recovered. Look how Indiana and Wisconsin have recovered and moved on. So it's definitely the basis of policy decisions that have been made over time. Well, and uh, Bill Bergman had a piece uh, in his blog over at Truth and Accounting, truthandaccounting.org, looking at those five states that you mentioned, and he sort of consolidated them um, uh, on the... uh, Spectrum of Cato, the Cato Institute, which is a libertarian think tanks, their freedom ranking Lawy- lawyers per 10,000 residents, the uh, the five states, Illinois being the worst of the five. So you get a sense of this lawyers per 10,000 residents. Those five states would be you know ranked fourth if you aggregated them fourth in the nation. Taxpayer burden the combined. They're the sixth worst trust in government combined. They're the ninth worst. Democrat show share a vote for president combined. They're the fifth highest percentage of public workers under a collective bargaining agreement combined. They're the eighth highest real value of a hundred dollars combined. They're the sixth worst. Uh, so that starts to really paint a picture about the, uh, economic and regulatory and, uh, uh, judicial, uh, civil justice landscape that uh, is similar among these five bad examples and in contrast to, of course, all the states on the other end of the spectrum, including some of our Midwestern neighbors that are really starting to pick them up and put them down and enjoy positive economic times and see the population flocking to their states, populations flocking to their states as a result. Yeah, Dan, look at the two data points in in Bill's uh, piece. Lawyers per 10,000 residents and percentage of public workers under the C- under CBA. The, the, the reality of it is those two things are related and they're related politically, right? The, the trial lawyers in particular, but sort of the bar in general, and I'm a member of that bar, and public sector unions are currying favor with politicians 
to pass laws that ultimately increase their participation in the economy and raise their ability to earn a living in the economy. And so those those two data points are really important because they show who's really in charge of the state politically. It's not Governor Rauner, and ostensibly it's not Mike Madigan. It's the public sector unions and these lawyers who are lobbying to get the things they want done to the expense of everyone else. Meanwhile, you're seeing property taxes and tax rates, real tax rates as a percentage of home value, spike in Chicago, finally. It's coming to Chicago, uh, even with commercial property subsidizing residential and uh, uh, Cranes reporting this week a Civic Federation study, which I think under under uh, represents the problem. But nonetheless, remember, I think they're undershooting the problem. And uh, even they find the effective tax rate in Chicago commercial property is up 92 percent, 92 percent in the last decade. And the same thing, by the way, is happening in northwest suburban Cook County. Uh, Arlington Heights, Glenview, Schaumburg, Evanston, all up 88 percent plus. Collar County is generally up 30 to 60 percent. So you have commercial property taxation uh, that is really inhibiting uh, business location because of the cost of doing business in suburb in, in Cook County and the Collars. And then you have residential property taxation that's eating away home equity. Um, so you're not getting a real return on your home. And um the result of this environment? Let me give you an example. Manufacturing. Uh, we had uh, against the current, uh, you can find it upstream at uh, dashideas.com, most recent interviews with Zach Model, who's, uh, who's an executive at a fourth generation manufacturing company in Lyons in West Central Cook County. Uh, 100 years the business has been there, Atlas Tool Works. We've had him on the show before. Yeah. Talked about manufacturing in Illinois. L- look at, listen to this stats, these stats. You know, this is uh, four years from the bottom of the Great Recession and four years forward. So from December 12 to December 16, December of 2012 to December of 2016, compare contrast. Illinois lost 18,000 manufacturing jobs during that four year period. Indiana plus 31,900. Ohio plus 31,900. Wisconsin plus 17,100. Michigan plus 59,800, Missouri plus 8,900, Kentucky plus 18,000. So what's going on in all of our Midwestern neighbors on the wealth producing with with respect to the wealth producing sector that is manufacturing that isn't going on in the transportation logistics manufacturing center of the country? Yeah, it's the regulatory and tax burden on manufacturers who can go to neighboring states, have a better quality of life uh, for the families that work at those companies and have a much lower cost, property tax cost, income tax cost, workers' compensation costs, unemployment insurance costs at the neighboring states, making them more friendly places to do business. And why would you keep your factory here if you could have better life for yourself and for your, the families that work for you? Because manufacturing isn't, or, or agribusiness, not our number one sector anymore. You know what our number one sector is? Government. Correct. And the other stat that people should memorialize and share is that Illinois also enjoys the greatest disparity between manufacturing jobs and government jobs of any state in the Midwest. 175,000 more government jobs in Illinois than manufacturing jobs. So, again, which is the wealth producing sector? Is it government or is it manufacturing and other sectors, uh, both on the uh, production side as well as the service side. I mean, that's the choice that's being made. We've become a government-centric command control economy, and it's not going to work out any better for us than it did for Eastern Bloc countries, particularly when you have other models that are readily accessible for people to, uh, to, 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 to choose in terms of where they uh, make their claim, where they stake their lives, and that's what they're doing. Yeah, and they and they, sh- you know, to a certain, and I love the state, but to a certain extent, they should, right? You have these neighboring states that are kicking our tails with respect to manufacturing, quality of life, property taxes, you know, how you live. They all have, you know, government service. They all have parks. They all, it's just a better quality of life, and people are starting to realize that. And like I say all the time, you want to come take your family to the great city of Chicago, and it's a great city. Hop in the car and come spend a weekend with all that extra money you have. 
And the uh, the other interesting thing, just to close the loop on manufacturing, so all the politicians pay lip service to manufacturing. The Technology and Management Association, TMA, which is a trade association for small to mid-sized manufacturers like Zach Models, Families Business, Atlas Toolworks, finds two-thirds of state legislators, two-thirds of the 177 state legislators in Springfield have a failing grade according to the TMA for their legislative scorecard. So, um, and of course they do, because they say one thing and they'll tell you one thing at the door and they'll tell a uh, manufacturer one thing when they tour his plant to get pictures for their mail pieces and their television commercials and whatnot. With, with the hard hats on and everything. Yeah, right. And then they go down to Springfield and do the bidding of the institutional interests that grow the public sector and cannibalize the private sector. That's the scam that's being run, and people to have uh, March 20th and then November 6th to decide if they want to continue to be part of that scam, whether on the inside benefiting from it, and how do you look in the mirror, uh, or continue to be fleeced by that scam, or you know they join the 62% of uh, Atlas Van Line customers moving out. 